Agios Ministries Global introduces Apostle Tony A. Kalema to unleash the patent and unsearchable riches in God's Word to give you practical application in your walk of faith. For more information, you can contact us on 0778-630265 or 0200-900-824 or you can reach us on all social media platforms under Hagios Doxa. Download our app from Google Play Store or App Store or you can reach us on our website www.hagiosministriesglobal.org Remember, the word of God is not just a mere message but a life to be lived. Enjoy. Lord, we thank you for this new month. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you because your mercy is a new every morning. Your grace abounds to us every day. Somebody have reason to give thanks to the Lord. Open up your mouth and give thanks to the Lord. Father, we thank you for this new month. You've given us a blessed month, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord in our tongues. Bless the name of the Lord in your words. Bless the name of the Lord. Let us therefore give thanks to Him. Let us Everlasting, we thank you for Shuka Masentelo. We thank you for Prilly Konda. We thank you, Mashenana. Rantoba Kasulamande. Lord, you gave us, you gave us a wonderful month of March. You gave us a month where we learned to angels, Lord. Father, we thank you for yet a new season. We thank you for a new month where you teach us something new, where you teach us something fresh, where you amplify our understanding, Lord. Our consciousness is expounded in the name of Jesus. We thank you because you position us, Lord, in our path of restoration. In all things, mekus and adai, malotari prando hoganadi. But Father, everything you teach us this month leads us this year, Lord. Whatever you teach us leads us. It leads us to freedom. It leads us to restoration in every way. In the mighty name of Jesus, the restoration of our souls, the restoration, Lord, in our families and our ministries, Lord. Restoration everywhere of our lives, Lord. Father, we thank you for Nude Hilebosa Mantradaba, Mandra Sanaba. As you told us from the beginning of this year, Lord, that behold, I restore all of the conquer, the locusts and the palm arms. You restore, you restore, Lord. We thank you. My God, the years that seem to have been wasted, we thank you for the quickening speed of your spirit. Lord, for the quickening of your spirit that restores us in everything, Lord. Mashekebrakostanamando. Ranika Vantale Brenda Humara Sombrido 
Father, we thank you for aligning us in every way, aligning us in everything, O oh Lord. We thank you, Fisho Koman Talaba. We thank you, Mashinema Kancho Barane. We thank you, Varanoski Brentia Kenemes Panuda. We thank you, Jimanda Ronapa Lepondo Humantaria Goma Teleba. Masha Pela Kuma Rapada Sorepete Arando Zomancleno. Masha Kama Sonta Labi Rabento Prando Humana Sile Prando Humadan Makuda. Manteleba i kamba shoto vado humade so mekete masho kopa se telepa. Somebody don't stay quiet. At least speaking of the tongues, speaking of the tongues as you prepare your mind. Speak in other tongues, so let your spirit quicken your mind, quicken your understanding, quicken your body in the name of Jesus to so deal with every distraction in the name of Jesus. For it's written, the weapons of warfare are not kind of but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every magnation and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought of the obedience of Christ. As you pray, Father, your mind is brought under subjection. Your mind is delivered from a wandering mind, from a wandering mind, from a divided mind, from a discouraged mind. Ranakli Monto Hoparaneski Bradora Ranake Masho Koma Seleba. Somebody just create time right now. I just speak in other tongues fervently. Masho Koma Stenamendi. You speak mysteries in the spirit, mysteries that align your destiny, mysteries that align your prayer life, mysteries that align your word intake, mysteries that align your favor, mysteries that align everything in your life. Sheka basi telebre constante mandra stoni mo arande labranto humara gisa brahorando fo sheka ma chalama mandro bana na simancho bolo kono rada manda basho komo sapali brakoma zangara basho to para kuma dalaba sontare ba mukunda rapando kuma dama shoma gasende tele ligo safa shele kamro to kuma tani kazunka dala. Masho masa prakoma tile brakoba santa rigade masho repondo kuma dalka senene mandranoski bratari boshando vranike mandranika liprando humanda riako jakata liprata foneka mandida andreka mandrona mandraka pajada liba koba santa laba koba shontopa yamakata lambo rope humana siva shika pako zamaka telebe rotambo kumenda libronta hamanda you win every battle in your mind, you win every battle. You deal with every bombardment of Satan in your mind. Lonakli Bonesco Finto Homo Tenkado, a Mandrino Soventa in Macomo Shakaba, Mandro Somena Hina Prodo, Homa de la Camazondi, Molocomo Shantari, Aribrando Homa Denne Cantelege, Rukando Pache Cambreca, Majaca Malo Pra Combada, Radeco La Prona Hova Neneca, Masha Paco Zaripa Cataraba Sondo, Ranecli Bonitori Prando Homa Nasho Velanca, Ranacli Monitori Pra Homa Noson Prarola. Pulo Santa y Matra Pondo Humanaso Vela, Ranocla, Menatla, Pina Como Jambla, Mangradala, Brontela, Vendela, Crenela, Impliga, Brostica, Frittica, Lectica, Shoclanica, Pondo Humaneso Lenora, Ranacli, Monito, Riprendo, Humasha Venote, Eliga Zime Telepe, Lopando Humaneki, Ejeketain, Yamoko Masia, Proto Humatinka, Lanacli Boneski, Foshado Humatinma, Randaka, Liprondo Humandeleba, Yamanglano, Montroba, Shone Humanes, Lembe D. Renico Vinotor Prando Humana Sia Proco Montondena Jamanico Riprondo Humanda Rasia Te Elebe Kojaka Vacata Masha Comba Sataya Somebody take this deeper Lanocli Bonto Huma Den Mate Decring into your mind Decring into your mind In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus You win in your mind You win in your mind Lonafli Pondo Human Tarianga You can never be put down You rise above every influence of the enemy Every attack of the in your mind, you rise above in everything. Lona Pashondo Humaka Sandela, you subdue every thought. You subdue every thought, you subdue every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let Tomba Shaneta, for it is written, bring it into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let Toma Shanta Huma Saleba, Ranaklimonto Huma Nevotela. 
Having in a readiness to punish all disobedience. When your obedience is fulfilled, child of God, your obedience is fulfilled by the word. Even as you subdue your thinking, your thoughts to the word of God, your thoughts to the word of God, your understanding to the word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Melosa frando human tariage, majene kemando ripa huma don palela, la mantrene kovoshandi monto huma den makora, ranakli monito revo huma jama kene, ima sofa telebra comba kelela shonda, maraka. Ronda, Malila Ganta, Marala Jonda, Malala Genda, Alaso Vanta, Ricandra Bonetti, Mashifa Kosa Paka Rika Tenta Ribada, Orasovo Shomendo, Ranaklino Mento Humande, Mandilasto Freno Humadan Kadi, Mashani Vasondo Humatel Meki, Maliga Ranosco Frato Humatinka, Shakano Na Sampre Lopendo Humadenkaya, Masha Koma Sentreba, you rise above, you rise above, for you've been raised up with Christ, you reign with him in the heavenly places. Lord for is written. Wherefore, guard up the lungs of your mind. Lenof le pondo humenaso venola ranaklata. Rest your hopefully upon the grace that is to be revealed unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You are preparing your mind for action, even as you receive the word, even as you receive the word in the mighty name of Jesus Linova shondo human talabe ramante libro huma doma seke, shemenkle pondo huma doma sita, shipakla fonto huma dizantala Ranaka Lomando Humantaria de Ranika Liprande Humanesso Fentele Manesso Fentele Manesso Fentele Rinakli Bonto Humadon Makila Masteno for Shogli Pondo Humanistuda Jamanistuda Riponde Humental Yabrengo Maranoski Vadakli Pondo Humanas Fermenda You bring into captivity Lateva Shoto Humansaya Every thought of influence over man's mind in your area, in your family, Linova Shontaya, in your city, Limanto. Huma den Teske, in your nation, Limontro Pendo, Humanas Farida, in your region, Limontro Panada, Yamangleka, Romando, Humason Radella, by the sword of the spirit, let off your pota, Huma Takle, Malesondri Ponido, Human Dragadeske, Mashakoti, Lepranto, Huma Dasto, Felonani, you can never be a victim, but a victor, because you've been made to rise up and cry in the mighty name of Jesus. Nay, in all these things, ye are more than conquerors, through him the latter, Linofa Shande, Himan Krenu, Ranakli Bonito Ripra Huma Steriva, Jamanclane Masontro Humandia Banata, Ramanteli Bodon de Loprendo Humanige, Mejene Vontaria Bronto Humadanka, Mashoko Pale Predo Humada Sadi. Leva Sontra Peno Huma Dom Bracota, Mashokoma Sombradela, Ramanakli, Roma Sofelo Huma Dinka, Shoman Ketali Prando Huma Denka, Yaman Kalino, Yaman Kalino Lom Prebon de Huma Dasanite, Madika Varonto Ripondo Humanas of Ella, Masha Capaleta, Radakli Pondo Humanasti Londa, Ranekla Minotre Fondo Humanasti, Mashekle Menuta Riprendo Humanizi, Gajidli Benoskile Fondo Huma Denka, Electri Ponito. Ripra Huma Nostra de la Yaman Clavena Mori Passon de Huma Nasson Bradela Yaman Clade Lori Brondo Huma Dasson de la Rana Clinema Masha Capandora Ramante Libra Huma Nasalento Rano Caliprando Huma Nasaline Yamanta Nasaline Yamekla Nivo Shon Humaneza Mangraino Cofondo Huma Don Kayala, Yamen Kaninoski Fusho Pelkari, Radakli Pondi Huma Tondo Dido, Ranika Livonda Humantarea, Yeme Komendo Poza Kama Tumba Koma Tempegele, Mando Ipali Brahuma Nasete, Huma Nasete La Prondo Huma Ndaraka, Raka Dali Brahuma Domba Saya, Shelefe. Doi coro prando huma diza da Jamaleke na li prando huma den karo La rossi li frando huma del kate Eleke zino te prelo pendo huma nazi Jamile ke rapino huma drambo kene Mashini vando ri prando huma dan kozia Jeli ke rento ri prando huma da satela Ranak li monito ri pro nubo no mena Alima na rekoro vondo huma doria Shata la pro navo suno huma deklia Ile se prendo huma desa frendo hu karada Yaman klane pa Somebody go ahead and give thanks to the Lord Alo safina hima ta pa shakata La dendo pasando huma dara konta Liza priza, Liza priza Mo shaka man tore paya The gospel is free Lino klefondo huma dasa ta Light shines upon hearts of men Light shines upon hearts of men Light shines upon hearts of men Limato rimanote Rimato rimanote Rimato rimanote Levanda humanta riage, gemelaski banito ripo humadoskela, masha kamadoskelata, ibelasi vrahatora pen.
no huma do sandaruda li garante lebra domino como ramba hashonadaya father we thank you my son tabe thank you for making us more than hunger thank you for making us lord we know that shine the human schedule about circumstance lord we thank you for lifting us above the lord lifting us above the influence of guilt and condemnation lifting us above sin and satan lifting us above sickness and disease lifting us above poverty and lack let's show phenomena has on the like we thank you boni skelia from the human and kalia masha come na son talia renak le bonito prendo human na son daria renak la bonato di fondo human den ka shagodas ke prendo human tan kanido liga vazon tele prendo human na solende renekline me show no human chania ma control la rako le bo shi fasi ka patala baro kambade reni kodori prendo human tarezo mandariota jamaleski bonito le prendo human don mare kandra danaka Father, we bless your name forever, Co Santa Leo. Just bless the name of the Lord, somebody. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Fantoskeli. We thank you for Shona Humanda Yakata. Thank you for Shota Lady. again to our service Capsi Hagis Ministries Global and Doxa Life Churches. If you're joining us for the first time, you're welcome to this beautiful service, live live service. You can click share and invite somebody to be part of this beautiful, beautiful morning as we shall be sharing the word of God, as we shall be launched into the experience of a new month. We bless the name of the Lord for this new month and wherever you're streaming this service, we welcome you. Those that are on site, blessed be the name of God. Those that are online connecting with us from wherever you are, we welcome you gladly. Don't forget to invite somebody for service. Just, just click share. You can invite them through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp, whichever media platform you want to use. Please just click share. And don't forget to be part of the live service as you would comment on things that stand up for you. Uh, the scriptures, the uh, the points that could make sense for you. Um, yeah, just connect with us today. Hallelujah. Very, very excited because this is the month the Lord has made. <laughs> Glory to God. This is a special man. You know, God is amplifying our understanding of Christian warfare. Christian warfare. Now, this is a very broad area. And again, we have little time to share. We have about five services only to share this. And so God is giving us a beautiful experience. Hallelujah. This month. And don't forget that uh, this month we are teaching on lines that are not very common and so um, today we shall start with the secrets behind uh, Christian warfare and so um, this is a teaching like no other it's a little deeper and so you hear me say some things which are a little bit a little bit deeper especially uh, in the middle of the service but bear with me uh, as we shall be digging a little inside uh, we shall be looking at some of the behind scenes in the area of warfare. And if God allows us, of course, in the consequent services, we shall share again a little uh, more deeper things. But for today, allow me unfold to you, um, you know, this beautiful month of Christian warfare. You know, when you're talking about restoration for Christian, remember this year, when we're, not yet, we're not losing focus of what God is doing with us. God is restoring us in many capacities, in many ways, you understand. God is restoring us. And so everything that God is speaking of us tunes us to, uh, to, you know, the tools that we can use to be restored. You remember the ministry of angels. God uses it to, to bring restoration in our lives a certain way. And so again, this month, Christian warfare gives us an opportunity to delve into certain realities. And then once we understand what to do, it becomes very, very easy for you to fight, for you to know the actual fight of the spirit realm. You understand? For you to know how to be restored. Because you know, until you get to understand how restoration comes about, you only end at praying about it and say, Oh Lord, may I see restoration in my finances? May I see restoration in my 
and, and my you know uh, and my job restoration of my career restoration of my family my marriage restoration of my health restoration of this and the other we cannot talk about that without enhancing the tools and so Every month, God has given us an opportunity to share things that can make us understand the dynamics of restoration. You understand, child of God? And so what a month God has given us. What a month. What a month. <laughs> Glory to God. Forevermore. Of course, uh, uh, our theme scripture, we shall use it a lot this month. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 4 to 5. The, weap the weapons of warfare not kind of, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strong hearts. He says, casting down every magnitude and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And he says, bringing unto captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You see that? But he's also saying that have, in verse 5, that having a readiness to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. And so we'll look at the dynamics of warfare. And this is a beautiful one. Please don't get so familiar with spiritual things. The word of God is spirit. And so don't be there and say, ah, I know already about warfare. I've covered it on the foundations. I know about warfare. Maybe you'll be shocked that you don't know warfare as you ought to know it. And so it's got to be awakened in you a certain way. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. And so um, we shall be looking at things that really uh, enhance our understanding of spiritual warfare. Because you see, in the Old Testament, you'll find that uh, the word warfare is seldom used. Actually, you get to find out that in the entire Old Testament... Uh, the, the, the word warfare is only used twice. You understand? You'll only find it uh, uh, in, in, in two places. In Isaiah 20. Actually, it's only Isaiah who uses you know, that word in context of warfare. Because uh, the Hebrew word used for warfare, most of the times, for example, in our first devotion yesterday, we used the scripture in 1 Samuel 28, verse 1. Um, you realize that Isaiah was painting a picture of David going for war. The Bible says, and it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare. So you see the word warfare? Now that word warfare is again used by Isaiah. You see that? In Isaiah chapter 40 verse 2. That is the only time we see <clears throat> the word warfare appearing. Now the Hebrew word from where the word warfare was derived is used everywhere in scripture. But it's not used in the context in the context of a fight, in the context of, you know, a kind of wrestling, in the context of, you know, you know, an experience of, of, of fighting. You understand? And so uh, in First Samuel, it was used in the picture of David getting for war. Now in Isaiah, it was used in the picture, you know, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 2, he says that speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her, that her warfare is accomplished. Now that's very special. When he says her warfare is accomplished, Isaiah 40, 40 verse 2, her warfare is accomplished. Now that's a picture again of the finished works of our Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, uh, let me finish this verse. He says, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. Now you see, iniquity is tagged to warfare. Meaning the warfare is describing here is the war against sin. The war against the nature of sin is just painting a picture. That, you know, it, it shall come to pass that you know, God will deal with the sin issue in Christ. And so the warfare would be over. Now there's a place of warfare being over in the spirit realm. But there's a place of warfare not being over in the solical realm. And, I, and, I, and I, I'll blow some of your minds. you realize that when we say spiritual realm, your spirit doesn't necessarily every time wrestle with the devil. And you discover that today. And you know actually what happens in warfare. Exactly. Because many people say, ah, I'm fighting spiritually. My spirit is, is, is fighting the devil. I'm fighting the devil. You understand? But you realize that the prophetic word given to Isaiah here was saying, how warfare is over. Why? Because I iniquity is pardoned. For she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now, of course, later in Isaiah 60, 61, we, we have the picture of, of, of Mount Zion. You understand? But Isaiah described Mount Zion throughout you know, the entire book. Chapter 30 is talking about, you know, chapter 32 is defining how Zion and what happens in Zion, the experiences of Zion. When it comes to chapter 40, he's explaining actually what happens exactly. That's why later he says, says cry ye, cry, cry, all flesh is grass and the glory of man is like the flower of the grass. You understand? So he's defining things that, you know, present a Christian to a better place in the spirit realm. You understand? So I was telling you that in 1 Samuel, when it was first used, in the context of warfare, 
David was going for war. And so it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare, to fight with Israel. And Achish said unto David, Know thou assuredly that thou shalt go out with me to battle, thou and thy men. So this was a context of a physical fight. You understand? But I told you the, the Hebrew word, from where we get the word warfare, it was used everywhere in scripture, but was not used from the place of fighting. You understand? For example, uh, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 1, that word, that word you see there as host. And thus the, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts thereof, all the host of them. You see that? Now the word host used there is the same word to mean warfare, but it's meaning a heavenly host. You understand? Everything put together. It's not used in the context of fighting. Now the idea of fighting came later, you know, when the kingdom, uh, when David took over the kingdom. Because that kind of fighting had a signification in the spirit realm. Not every physical fight you saw in the Bible had a lot of implication in the spirit realm. You understand? Some of the battles were just carnal. They had no physical inclinations. Now, it depended on who fought. When Abraham fought physically, it had a spiritual implication. When, 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 when David fought, it had a spiritual implication. You understand? I'm talking about speaking, speaking in types of fig in figures, God talking to us. Now, you can tell me that Saul is going for battle and it has a spiritual implication to the, to the church. Because Saul is, 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 is a representation of the flesh. You understand? No flesh shall inherit the kingdom of God. Corruption cannot inherit. Now, the house of David has to grow strong and stronger because it's the house of the spirit. And so every battle that David is having has an inclination, has a signification spiritually. Now, that's how we interpret the Old Testament. Not every battle you see in the Old Testament had any significance in the spirit realm. <laughs> you understand? And so it's important for you to have the wisdom while reading the Bible. All right, so I was telling you that in the Old Testament, it was a physical fight. You understand? It was a physical fight. That's why you see in the entire Old Testament, you're not going to find the name Satan appearing. And the devil did this. And Satan did this. You'll only find that in the book of Job. When the sons of God showed up. And it's not used in the context of the physical realm. It's shown in the context of the heavenly realm. Where when, when, when God had a meeting. A general meeting. Satan also showed up. You understand? Now that's the only time we are told about, about Satan openly. <laughs> you know, but most of the time Satan is expressed in, in types and figures. In kings. Like the king of, of, of Tyre. You know, through Nebuchadnezzar at some point, through he was indicated through uh, different pictures of, of, of kingdoms, of, of systems, uh, like the Babylonian system. So you find that the devil could not be explained openly. You understand? And so you cannot say, ah, these guys were fighting spiritually, they were fighting the devil. No, they were fighting, phys they were physical fights because these were carnal men. <laughs> you understand? And so when you see the Bible is decorated with so many stories of battles and someone was asking, God being merciful, how come the children of Israel kept killing people? They entered the promised land, they killed the, 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 you know, the, the, the sons of, of Anak, they, they killed the, the Jebusites, the Hevites, the Perizzites, the, all the heights were killed. Like, oh, why does God behave that way? Why do, does God support shedding of blood, killing? Now, people who don't understand how these reigns work, they always ask such questions. Now, those physical battles you see the children of Israel fought, they are a representation of spiritual battles that happen actually today. You understand? It may not necessarily be that Christians are doing uh, the fighting. Christians facilitate maybe sometimes angels to do a certain kind of fighting or withholding of other demons. Christians are fighting by casting out demons. Christians are fighting by dealing with uh, human beings that serve the devil, uh, you know, those who are agents of Satan. And so you find that these battles are just depicting what happens today. You understand? Now, if someone looks at it carnally, they cannot interpret the spiritual signification of what you call spiritual warfare. And so warfare in the Old Testament was a physical thing. Was physical. David fought, and the Bible says he fought battles of the Lord. Now you're asking yourself, how does God need to be fought for? <laughs> and that's what you would be asking. Hey, you mean battles of the Lord? You need when Muslims say, we are fighting for jihad. We are fighting for our God. You mean they have a point? Under the Old Testament system, maybe they have a point. You understand? Because God had to be fought for physically. But the physical fights had a spiritual implication. Now today, I'm not sharing on spiritual implications of fights in the Old Testament. You understand? But I'm just giving you a picture that in the Old Testament, there was warfare. But unfortunately, or fortunately, these were kind of men. So they fought physical battles. Now, you can't be born again and you think spiritual battles are fought physically. 
You think by attacking another man of God, attacking another sister, trying to put somebody down, fighting physically can have any good for you. It can have any good because the system changed. You understand? And so in the New Testament, you'll find that the Greek word actually used for warfare, uh, there's a common Greek word. This one I'll mention, it's stratia. Stratia, uh, stratia is a common a Greek word used in most of these scriptures on warfare. When you check 2 Corinthians chapter 10, when you check most of the parts where warfare appears, Ephesians chapter 6, you realize that, um, that stratia is mostly used. You understand? And so, uh, actually, stratia as a noun, uh, it means to serve in a military campaign or to execute apostolic duties and functions. Now, it was explaining two things. The physical fight that happened in the military campaign was of the Old Testament. Now, the execution of apostolic duties and functions. Apostolic duties does not mean everyone who is performing apostolic duties are an apostle by calling. No. Apostolic duties means that somebody is stepping out. Preach the gospel, stepping out to win souls, stepping out to help people grow, stepping out to pray for people, stepping out to heal the sea, stepping out to raise the dead, stepping out to cleanse the lepers, stepping out to do different things. You understand? Now, I need to follow critically because I'm laying a foundation that could help you to perceive the holistic understanding of spiritual warfare. You understand? Actually, I like the meaning of strata as a verb. Now, strata, I'm talking about warfare, Christian warfare. Now, the Greek word strata actually is a verb. It means to contend with carnal inclinations. To contend with carnal inclinations. In other words, to the new man in Christ, what we call warfare is when you contend against carnality. Is when you contend against the flesh. Is when you contend with things that get to your soul. Is when you deal with solical challenges. You understand? Because it's important for you to understand how warfare, uh, you know, warfare is understood to the new man in Christ. Now to the New Testament believers, spiritual warfare means contending against number one, the world system. Number two, carnality. Number three, false religion. Number four, Satan. But Satan in which context? In the context of his deception, guilt, and condemnation. Please don't forget those four things. Because uh, when, I was, when, I, when I was laying the foundation many years ago for uh, the enemies of our faith, some of you, of course, got to understand that. When you listen to the little teaching on the enemies of our faith, you'll find that the world system, carnality, false religion, and Satan appear. Now, as much as Satan affected the world system and carnality, you and false religion, you'll find that he as himself with people who serve him directly, they also do a work, which I'll explain later. You understand? Because Satan uh, massively uses three weapons. Deception, guilt, and condemnation. Deception, guilt, and condemnation. When you remove deception, you remove guilt, you remove condemnation, Satan is weak. And the reason why he loves the law, Satan loves the law. Let me hope you know that. The reason why Satan loves the law is because he can use the law against man. The law is given to the flesh, right? Don't do this, don't steal, don't do this, don't do this. And then, remember, the flesh is already weak. So Satan loves it when the flesh is told, you shall not fornicate, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not do this, you shall not do the other. Why? He knows that the flesh can't do it. So what he does, he'll come back with this very law and say, but God said you shall not do this. But see, you're doing it, so you're worse off. So he's going to use the law as a bait for deception. And then, once he uses this law to the mind of a believer, this believer will feel guilt and will be condemned. And once there's guilt and condemnation, the Bible says that your heart loses confidence. The, you know, you remember 1 John chapter 3 from verse 20? He says that, for if our heart condemn us, then we, we, we don't have that confidence. If our heart condemn us not, you know, it becomes easier. The Bible says God is greater than our hearts. And so it's important for you to understand that when you're talking about, you know, spiritual warfare, at least put those four things in context. How does the world system come into play? How does carnality play out? What is the role of false religion? How does Satan play his part? You understand? Because remember, warfare to the born-again person has been reduced to the mind. You understand? It is not anymore in the spirit realm. You know, some people say, we are fighting demons, we are fighting the devil, attack principalities and powers. I'll shock some of you who have not understood this before. That you see, demons are, are anyway, I'll, I'll explain that a little bit later. So there are people who feel warfare is when you go somewhere and pray against demons and pull down demons which function in a certain place. Maybe there's a principality in a place, maybe there's a power, 
maybe uh, as an authority, maybe there is a, a, a pattern of spiritual wickedness uh, in high places that function in a place. And so somebody thinks that by attacking them, he's doing something amazing. He does not know that actually it is the, it is the effects, it is the executions that these forces do on the human mind that matter. You understand? It is not them as them. You understand? They are weak without the execution and the influence of man's mind. You get the point? So if this, this hierarchy of spiritual forces never bring an effect on a mind, a mind of a man, they, they will have no effect. They will do nothing. You understand? So I was telling you, uh, this month is very important for you to understand the essence of spiritual warfare. What are the secrets behind warfare? What are some of the things sometimes that delay your restoration, delay your victory? Because you're already victorious in Christ. You are not fighting to get something. You're instead protecting what you have. But in protecting what you have, sometimes you're delayed to experience what you already have. You're delayed. For example, there are Christians who live in guilt and condemnation for so long. So they delay in letting forgiveness overflow in their soul. They leave forgiveness to be locked up in their spirit. They leave healing to be locked up in their spirit. So it never manifests in their souls and bodies because they don't know what to do exactly. You understand? And that's why Paul told his son Timothy that concerning the prophecies which have gone on thee, use them by them wage a good warfare. Use them to wage a good warfare. If you don't use the word to wage a good warfare, if you don't use the revelation of reality to wage a good warfare, it becomes very difficult to engage in what we call the Christian warfare in a spiritual battle. You understand? The question is, are you ready to rise above physical senses in order to perpetually live by faith? Because you see, rising above physical senses in order to perpetually live by faith is the hallmark of our Christian warfare. You understand? You know, if you don't rise above your physical senses, physical senses are good. The five natural senses I'm talking about. The seeing, the hearing, you know, the feeling, the, the, the tasting, and then the touch. I mean, these, these five senses enable us to fellowship with the physical world. You understand? But if we want to function in the spirit realm, we don't use five physical senses. You understand? We use the sixth sense of faith. You understand? It's what we use to relate. And so it's very important for you to know that Satan is so smart that he knows where to put the battle. And many Christians are so foolish that they shoot the battle from their mind and they take it to the air. They shoot the battle in between their ears and put it in the wrong place. And so as long as you're minding about irrelevant things, Satan has no issue. Do you understand the child of God? Satan has no issue. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so, Satan has no issue. Satan has no issue with a Christian who never focuses on truth. Who shifts truth from the mind and is taking it to somewhere else. You want to, maybe when God gives me an opportunity uh, uh, later in the month, I'll talk to you about the critical conditions of the mind that enable a Christian to win in their walk of faith. You want to send a child of God. And so, uh, for example, the Bible tells us, let me just give you this little example. In 2nd, 2nd Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it's a very, very common verse. It says, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest, or lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. Now, have you heard of the idea of Satan being the God of this world? Of course, somebody said, how does Satan become a god of this world? How does he? Satan was defeated by Satan. Rather, Satan was defeated by Jesus Christ at the cross. Remember that? He removed the authority from him. Then why is he still a god of this world? Satan will always remain a god of this world as long as deception and his system is running the world. You understand? As long as the world still functions a fallen system, this is an orchestration of Satan. This is a kind of deception that came through the Babylonian system. You understand that the Babylonian system was backed by, 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 by Satan. who used Nimrod and the rest of our colleagues to build a system that controls the world until today. You understand? And so when you talk about the world system, this was an orchestration of Satan, but it's an indirect orchestration of the devil. When you look at carnality, carnality is someone being natural. 
You understand? They function with five senses. Not everything that is carnal is evil, but all evil is carnality. All, all evil is carnal. Not everything that is carnal is evil. Because being carnal means being, being natural, being physical, for example. Physical healing in medical, uh, in medical places, medical centers, is a kind of thing. It's a physical thing, but it's not evil. You understand? And God is not against it, but it's not an excellent way. You get the point? And so we have a kind of system, as I've given an example, where men have to fall sick. Sometimes men, men have to die always. Men have to degenerate. That, that is a fallen system. You understand? And that is being carnal. And sometimes being carnal may not mean being evil. But at its best, carnality cannot fellowship with God. At its best. Carnality just makes you an average human being. It does not make you a, Christ, a, a victorious Christian. Do you understand? So we talk about the world system. We talk about carnality. We talk about false religion. All these three have a massive impact on the human mind. They have a massive impact on the human mind. They limit the human mind. They cripple the human mind. They subdue the human mind. They burn the human mind. They cause the human mind never to rise above certain limitations. And, and that's, that's the effect. You know, so that's why our warfare, it is, to, it is to deal with these creeping effects of the fallen world. The creeping effects of carnality. The creeping effects of false religion. The creeping effects that Satan brings that I'm going to explain a bit deeper. So you see, salvation is an already accomplished reality in our spirit. Because you know, you're righteous, you're holy, you're complete, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit forever. So which means that Satan has no battle in your spirit or with your spirit. He's defeated by Christ in the spirit realm forever. This is what I was telling you. That you see, Satan is a defeated foe. In our spirit, Satan has nothing to do. Remember when Jesus saw Satan coming and he says, the prince of this world cometh, but he has nothing in me. That is a believer. That's somebody who is born again. You're born again. You don't have any spiritual battle with the devil. Your spirit is not fighting the devil for anything. In other words, the devil is, has nothing to do in your spirit. Has nothing to do with your spirit. So what does he do? He relegates that battle to your soul. He relegates that battle to your mind. The battle is not for your spirit. The battle is in your mind. I hope you're getting me when I say that, you know, sin is already defeated for. So your spirit, sin has no business with your spirit. That's why he cannot corrupt your spirit. He cannot infiltrate your spirit. He has nothing to do with your spirit. Perfect, righteous, holy, born again, and born from above, born anew, born brand new, unheard of, novel, amazing, peculiar, unheard of. That's a believer. And so you see this, what we call the spiritual battle, actually is the solico battle. It is the battle that happens in your mind. Satan has nothing to do except he attacks your mind. If you can defeat Satan in your mind, you've defeated him forever. If you can defeat him in your mind, I mean, you have no victory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so I was telling you that the battle was Lord to man's soul. So the actual battlefield of Satan with a believer is in the mind. So through his work of deception, he constantly bombards man's mind with subtle, deceptive, and negative thoughts. Subtle, deceptive, and negative thoughts. Which consequently put pressure on a man's emotions. I'm going to explain this deeper. Because I want you to know the secrets of warfare. Because some of you are presented with warfare every day and you have no idea. You have no idea. It's amazing that Satan can use your ignorance to put it down at your workplace. Satan can use ignorance to put it down in your health. Satan can use your ignorance to put it down in your family. Satan can use ignorance to put it down in any way. Do you understand? So Satan is described as the God of this world because he still has the ability to attack anyone's mind. <laughs> you see that? Through a pattern of repeated suggestions, there is one thing Satan cannot stop doing. Satan will not stop suggesting something in your mind. Satan will not stop bombarding your mind. And I'm going to shout with you deeper how he does it. Because you need to really know this. You need to know this. Some of you, God has nothing. Some of you are blaming God for certain things, but honestly, God has nothing to do with you has nothing to do with it. You have limitations from the devil. And you, you have no idea about it. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing how Satan can enter someone's home. He eats breakfast. He eats lunch. He eats supper. And he goes away free. Just like that. I'm like, oh boy. How could Satan walk? And the Bible says, 
How can a strong man, how can somebody enter a strong man's house except he binds him? He enters and he eats everything, takes it all. But like, oh, Satan enters your body, I mean, messes it up. He leaves you, I mean, he leaves you sick, enters your finances, messes your finances up. He leaves you crippled. He enters your family, disorganizes everything, he walks away free. Ha! Huh? And you're just looking. And you're being a nice Christian. Oh, we worship God. God is so wonderful. True, you worship God. You're so wonderful. But you need to come from a certain line of ignorance. Do you understand? One of the things I've appreciated about devils, and, and I'm not appreciation in quotes. Don't quote me wrong because some of you are very good at quoting people. <laughs> One of the things I appreciate about sin, he's so consistent. Demons are so persistent. They'll do something today they fail, tomorrow they fail, the other day they fail. They'll keep doing it and doing it and doing it until it works out. You know, one time I was dealing with a certain group of people, I was helping them to rise above certain things. You know, these devils were coming back to attack them in the mind, attack them in their dreams, attack them. And one time I was, I was like angry and I, I, I engaged one of, the, one of the, the spirits that was really one of these fallen, not fallen, these are the spirits of men that serve, serve the devil. I was like, but Lucas, why do you keep doing this? They said, this is our job description, this is what we do. <laughs> From that time, I stopped being angry and annoyed about devils and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and demonic agents because they are so determined to do their job. They are so determined. Now, when I saw them diligent to that level, I said, oh, my God. And me, I can't be, I can't be consistent. And I made up my mind. I said, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it again and again and again and again and again and again. Hey. Because I see devils, human agents of devils, I mean, do it so consistently. They cast out a demon, it comes back, and it attacks another person. They cast out this other demon, it goes back, it comes back. I mean, I mean, say, this is what we are, that's what we are supposed to do. Oh my God. I mean, you look at how the fallen system of Satan works. You're amazed at how nice and diligent they are. Oh my God. This is amazing. Oh, Jesus. So I was telling you that Satan always succeeds because most people in this world, including believers, are ignorant of God's word. Many born-again believers haven't even yet appropriated the mind of Christ. You remember when Paul was writing the Corinthian chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 2 Corinthians 11, 3, when he says, but I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Simplicity. You see that? He says your mind should be corrupted. In other words, it's so easy to corrupt certain people. I mean, some people are so simple minded that Satan just walks in their mind and suggests anything and they just do it. Just like that. It's so simple for him. So all corruption, diversion, disloyalty, hatred, and rebellion start as a seed of thought in one's mind. You understand? Just like you see, when you want to be successful, it starts as a seed in your mind. All success increase health and excellent life start as a seed of thought in your mind. So you have to be intentional what to entertain in your mind. As simple as that. You're not going to blame God. You're not going to blame angels. You're not going to blame anybody. You're not going to blame your, where you come from, your background. You're not going to blame nobody. You have to rise and take charge. You have to rise and take charge of your mind. You have to rise and define what gets in your mind. You have to rise and define what to meditate upon in your mind. You have to rise and take shape. Because the place of captivity is in the mind. Haven't you heard the scripture? Our theme scripture of the mouth. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 to 5. For the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God. Remember, they are not carnal. They are not physical. They are not physically aided. They are not physically aided. He says they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are strongholds? A stronghold is an area in your mind where you're held captive by deception. An area in your mind where you're held captive by demons and you even have no idea about it. You know, one of the craziest things I've seen in humanity is that most people are bound but they have no idea. And that's how Satan takes the party. Satan is always in celebration. Why? Because most people don't know they're in captivity. They do not know, they do not know. Somebody just walks and it, it, it walks to you and says, oh, so-and-so is bad and the other. And you just register just it in your mind and conclude so-and-so is bad. Somebody walks to you and says, so-and-so did this and the other. Your mind, just, your mind is just like, you know, um, 
you know, it's a garbage collection, a, you, you synchronize garbage. I mean, I mean, anything that gets your mind, come on! You must have a mind that regurgitates, that when garbage comes in, it goes out. Garbage in, garbage out. You don't allow that to dwell in your mind. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Bible says, a simple-minded person just walks, walks on and is punished. Just walks on. It's so simple-minded. So this is the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. Now look at strongholds, look at imaginations, and look at every thought. You see that? Everything that exalts itself, every thought that exalts itself, that is the knowledge of God. So you're looking at strongholds, you're looking at imaginations, imaginations, and you're looking at thoughts. Because thoughts may define your imaginations. Your imaginations may create a stronghold or may create the mindset of the righteous, which the Bible calls phronesis. So you either have a stronghold at the end program of Satan's work in you or you have phronesis. Do you understand? The wisdom of the just, the wisdom that conditions you to live an excellent life, to have an excellent mindset that gives you excellent results. You see that? But you see, because of wrong doctrine, there are many genuine believers in Christ who take the spiritual battle to the air and spaces where principalities, powers, rulers of darkness are. There are many who do that. They have no idea that all the cohorts of Satan, whatever they do, those schemes in humanity are all in the mind. Do you understand? And, and many Christians are not aware of this. You see, you won't find anywhere in the New Testament, anywhere in the New Testament, anywhere in the New Testament, you're not going to find a physical fight or a fight in the air. You show me any man of God in the Bible, in the New Testament, the likes of Paul, James, who stood and all they were doing was to attack principalities and powers in the heavenly places. They were going, you principality of this, I cast you down. You principality of this, I cast you down. That is foolishness. That is foolish. It's not anywhere in the scriptures. It is the effects of these forces on the human mind that, that bring captivity. And so we must learn how to have the right warfare. We must learn the actual work that these spiritual systems of wickedness do to hold man captive. And that's why even to the believer, Paul writes and he's telling Timothy that, you know, and some of the Lord must not strive by general all men. In meekness, he says, in meekness, striking those that oppose themselves. In meekness, in striking those that oppose themselves because many Christians oppose themselves. That peradventure God may deliver them out of the snare of the devil who are being taken captive by him at his own will. Imagine Satan takes Christians captive at his own will. This is what I was talking about. There are many Christians... They are captive because Satan put them there at his own will. At his own will. Anytime he wants it, he does it. Jesus. Hey, Satan can walk to an average believer. Let me tell you. <laughs> he just walks in there, can cause any chaos of his choice. That's why you see these, these spirits and demons. I'm going to teach you how they really work because you need it today. <laughs> how exactly demons do it. You get it? Because every day you're in a battlefield. You want every day. I don't know of a day when Satan does, <laughs> does not attack the human mind. I don't know it. I don't know of a day when I, when I walk up and, and Satan has nothing to suggest. Hey, we just put him down because we know by the word. What do you do? But Satan will not stop suggesting. And I'm going to show you the windows, the gateways that Satan always uses. And it's so consistent that everything Satan does is in broad daylight. It's plain. I'm calling them secrets because many people are ignorant. But they're not actually secrets. You'll find that, oh, this is what Satan does always. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's a secret, and, and so we, we use the word phaderos because something is just covered. It's already in existence, but it's covered. It's not open. And that's what many times we call revelation, uncovering, uncovering. Of course, apocalypse is you're removing the veil to see what is behind scenes. But now phaderos, it's already available, but it's covered. And so what we need, we just need to uncover. You understand? And so if a man can have an experience of apocalypse and then has an experience of, of Ophaneros, it becomes easy to relate in the spirit realm. You understand? It becomes very easy. Do you know the reason why some of you can even afford not to pray in a given morning or in a given evening and you're citing reasons because you think prayer maybe is a feeling, prayer, the Holy Spirit has to move you a certain way. And you won't find that in the Bible that prayer is just a feeling. That prayer, prayer is a program. 
It has nothing to do with your feelings. It has nothing to do with whether you have the fire or not. You understand? You create the fire. You understand? Create the fire, put the sacrifice. It's up to you. You, you decide to do it. It's like, you know, wake up, our time is gone. I'm not going to pray, blah, 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 blah. You can give every kind of excuse, but it's up to you as a Christian. And I know many Christians, you know, especially in the Christ and the world, we're teaching the grace of God, the love of God. Many people don't want responsibility. Every time you give a Christian responsibility, they say, that man is legal. That man is legal. But let me tell you, 80% of the new creation realities are responsibility. Maybe you didn't know. I'll need to inform you. 80% of, you see, of the new creation realities, 80% are responsibility of the believer. 20% is the responsibility of God. And even God, what God presents, his responsibility is just to open you up to them. He's not going to exercise on your behalf. He just opens up. So he, he takes 20%. Have you heard of the 80-20 rule? Yeah, but what happens? Blessed be the name of the Lord. So you see, uh, <laughs> let me just, just make you laugh a little bit. You see, you won't find any scripture in the New Testament which addresses this kind of fight, you know, where people take the fight to the air. Even in the Old Testament, like in the cases of Daniel chapter 10. You remember Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, uh, where Michael had to come and, and, and keep fighting with the prince of Persia, and then uh, Gabriel had to take the message to Daniel. What, was there any what, was 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 Daniel doing anything with these with these devils or with these with these with these principalities? He was doing that. He was praying, and then what had happened? Angels, the angel of war was released in Gabriel to subsidize to to, to you know to to captive, I mean to deal with the prince of Persia, such that uh, the message that was given to to Gabriel may reach Daniel. Do you understand that? Even in the old times, it was not true. So you think if it was not true in the old times, it's true in the, in the new times? For us, we are above principalities and powers. We are above devils. You understand? So spiritually, it's telling you, actually above. That's why the battle was lowered. The battle was lowered to the solid realm. It is no more in the spirit. It is in the soul. <laughs> I mean, many can't believe this. It's a spiritual activity that is within your soul. It's not in your spirit. It's not spiritual. It's solical. If it is solical, God has no business with it. You have business with it. You understand? Because the solical realm belongs to you. You understand? The realm of your spirit, your spirit, God has sealed it by the Holy Ghost and you are complete. The soul realm belongs to you. You're in charge. That's why it is your mind. It is you to appropriate the mind of Christ. It is your will. It is you to decide. It is your emotions. You choose how to feel. They belong. They are yours. You're in charge. Now, if you don't want to be in charge, this is not your message. You understand? You say, oh, God will fight your battles. True, he already fought your battles. What is your part now? When the Bible says, let God arise, his enemies scatter. I mean, who lets God to arise? Who does that? It is you that does it. So you can't deny responsibility. You cannot deny. I know many Christians don't want responsibility. When you tell the Christian, meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them. Who's doing that? It is you. That your profiting will appear to all. They want the profiting to appear to others without investing. They don't want to meditate upon these things. They don't want to give themselves wholly to them. But even to, 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 I mean, look at a man in the old times. Like Joshua, God told him. This book of the, of the Lord should not depart from the mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou might do according to that written therein. That thou might have good success. I mean, one thing after another. One thing after another. Meditate. Give yourself wholly. The profiting comes. The success comes. I mean, you think there's any other shortcut? I mean, I know some people want to hear unmerited favor. Beautiful, beautiful. And I'm preaching unmerited favor because I'm telling you it's already done in the spirit realm. So what you have to do is to enforce the victory in the solid realm. You understand? And so that is grace. Because grace, on one hand, has something done. On the other hand, has your part to play. It has the objective and has the subjective. It has the finished works. It has the continual works. You understand? You're his workmanship, Christ in Christ, Jesus had a good works, which God prepared beforehand. Then you should walk in them. There is a walking path. You understand? And so you must, that's why in the spirit realm, you learn to sit, then you learn to walk, and you learn to stand. You can't say for me, I'm seated forever. You have to sit and you have to walk. After sitting, you receive. When you're sitting, you receive, you receive, you receive. You get to know who you are. You get to know who you are. You get to fellowship with God. And then in the walking, you're exercising the very things you've learned. And so many people, when they receive battles in their soul, battles of sickness and disease, battles of people's words, battles of persecution, battles of, uh, you know, of lack, battles of this and the other, they want to freak out. They don't know that it's high time you begin to walk. Hey! 
begin to walk now. Now they've been seated for a long time. You know that I'm the righteous of God. I'm the holy one of God. I've been made beautiful. I've been made wonderful. I cover the fullness of God. I cover the life of God. I cover the glory of God. Exercise it now. Show how it works. Walk therein. He says as followers of God, dear children, walk in love. Now that you've understood the love of God, walk in it. Yeah. Walk in it. And when there's need to stand, stand in it. Standing is when you're combating with the evil forces in your mind, evil forces in your soul, evil forces in your will. This is not a likable sermon, right? I'm not hearing any amen in the house. Who has the amen going? <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so we're talking about, you see, um, the true place of captivity in any person's life is in the mind. I said that. And I want to say it again, that the true place of captivity is in any person's mind. Through a pattern of repeated lies or suggestions, Satan builds a stronghold in one's mind. And that is true. He builds a stronghold. Because a stronghold is an area in your mind where you are held captive by Satan's deception. You understand? Some of these deception, these strongholds could start out being built in your mind when you're a bit younger. Maybe you're about 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10... It could be as a result of your environment, it's true. Unfortunate circumstances, many people go through child abuse, and neglect, false religion. I mean, people grow up under false religion. Maybe grow up, some of them are abused when they're younger. I mean, they receive negative words from maybe their aunties, their parents. So all these things, Satan uses them to establish a stronghold in someone's mind. You understand? So Satan can use anything to build in your mind a stronghold. That's why you see, when you hear people, uh, maybe a girl saying, all men are liars. I mean, someone may say, ah, for us in Africa, we can never be rich, we can never be officially married. Or someone says, ah, this sickness is ours, it's hereditary, all of us have a, a asthmatic, all of us have hypertension. You've heard of such statements. I mean, you've heard of, you know, stereotyping cultures in our society. Like you've heard of somebody say, every Muganda woman is crafty and so can be a thief. You know, the people who have a, a mind of racism, I don't like white people, I don't like black people, much more. All oh, these are strongholds. These are strongholds. Some of you will be amazed that you have so many strongholds that you have no idea about. <laughs> because you've been deceived too long. Suggestions have been repetitive too long that your mind is comfortable. It's locked up somewhere. And that's why some of us are not genuine givers. Because you know we, we have a stronghold. We have no idea about. Some of us it's difficult to do certain things to appreciate people. Because there's a stronghold that is still really holding you captive. And you have no idea. That's why the Bible says that God, that teaching them in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Let me tell you, men and brethren, many of us oppose ourselves. That's why the Bible says that God will grant them repentance. That perhaps God will grant them repentance. And you see, warfare is about God granting you repentance to see the place of your captivity in the mind. Because most of these things have already been built in you. They're already in your mind. It's too late. But you can discover them and deal out with them. You understand? It's so easy for, as I told you, in some of our areas of our life, it's so easy for Satan to just walk in. You understand? In other words, some of you, the way you relate with people, it is so easy for Satan to disorganize any relationship you have with people. <laughs> you understand? Because he knows you. He knows you already built a, 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 you know, a stronghold. So he just walks in, just puts in words there. So and so said this. This one said the other. This one said they don't like you. It's done. It's just, it's done. It's done. You understand? <laughs> I mean, you, you don't have, you've not broken it. You don't genuinely have, you know, no fault relationships. You may claim so, but it may not be true. Because how be it that it's so easy for you to talk about people? You answer negatively. If you can talk about somebody negatively, whether they're lead or not, I mean, it should be clear that you, you have a stronghold. You don't even be deceived. Don't be deceived. You understand? I know some of us can say, ah, me, I'm nice. Me, I think I'm okay. You're not okay. You're not okay. You need the light of God to show your captivity. You understand? I know this sermon may not be likable, but I'm going to a likable part. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So you find that sickness today in families, poverty in families today, I mean, deception in, 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 in I mean, all these things as a result of sin and building a stronghold in people's lives. In people's minds, there's stronghold, one stronghold after another. I mean, there are people who have 10 strongholds, some have five, some have seven, some have two. I don't know. I don't know how many strongholds you have. I, I don't know which trouble you have. But truth be told, look into your life. We don't know if you'd like to hang out with yourself in every area of life. Are you one person who loves to hang out with yourself? 
Would you really marry yourself at any one time? Hmm? Would you <laughs> would you wish to hang out with you in your area of health? Would you really wish to hang out with you in your area of your finance and your giving? I mean, I mean, look at your life. Look at your life. Look at your life. I mean, I'm not sure if you really like like to hang out with you. <laughs> But you wonder why, uh, why others don't want to hang out with you. Even you yourself, you don't want to hang out with yourself. So how do you, how do you want others to hang out with you? Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right. Uh, now, before I go to the last part of this, one, of this teaching, I want to tell you that you see, Satan loves, loves to use the world system. You understand? Loves using the world system and carnality. Because world system and carnality go hand in hand. Then false religion just comes in. Because false religion also holds people. It holds people's minds captive. It teaches them that there are certain foods you should not eat. There are certain, I mean, forbid some people to marry. It forbids some people to express themselves a certain way. It forbids women to do certain things. It forbids this and the other. So you find the false religion is a place of pure captivity. But you see, there's a scripture which I wanted to share with you before I get into the other deeper part. Uh, you see, Satan uses philosophy and vain deceit a lot. These are two things I've talked about before in previous devotions, I think. Uh, Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 The Bible says Beware lest any man spoil you Through philosophy and vain deceit Very common phrase Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 Beware lest any man Lest any man spoil you Through philosophy and vain deceit Underline those two words Philosophy and vain deceit After the tradition of men And after the rudiments of this world So you see uh, Philosophy Corresponds with the traditions of men Vain deceit Correspond with the rudiments of this world. That's why you see that scripture is carefully crafted. It says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of this world, not after Christ. So many believers think that Satan is a giant, powerful, scary, confronting person. Yet actually, in scripture, Satan is just a smart guy. He's very weak. Satan in scripture is the weakest guy, but he's the smartest and is the most deceptive guy. Weakest but smartest. And the most deceptive. So his weapon of deception is next to none. That's why Jesus says, was telling the Jews of your, Lord, of your father, the devil, who is alive from the beginning. He's the father of all lies. He's a father. He fathers deception. He's the origin of deception. To the degree that I can't trust anything Satan says. I've always told you those who always believe that if Satan tells you that well, you're having a bottle in your hand and you ask Satan, what is this? And he tells you it's a bottle. Better not believe it because he has no truth in himself. He's the father of it. He has no truth in himself. That's how fast Satan can go. So you see, Satan spreads his work of deception through philosophy and vain deceit. This is very common. Now, a philosophy is, is, is a theory based on nature, science, or superstition, which builds an attitude in someone as a guiding principle of behavior. I need to write these things in a devotion such that maybe you understand them a little bit deeper. Because you see, a, a philosophy is a theory based on nature, science, or superstition. But it builds an attitude in someone as a guiding principle of behavior. That's why you find some people who call themselves philosophers, philosophical. Now, this is an ancient thing which happened in the Greek Empire. They used to, you know, um, esteem, they used to have philosophers. You understand? They, they used to have very commonly philosophers. And, and Paul, when, when Paul first went to Corinth, he encountered philosophers. And uh, in the wisdom of the, by the wisdom of the Spirit, there's a way Paul dealt with philosophers. You understand? And so uh, he had to find a way of talking to them. One of the examples given uh, in, in, in the book of Acts chapter 17, when, when Paul was among the Corinthians, because they had, they had Greek philosophers. They even had schools. They were today, you have universities. By that time, what you'd call a university was schools of philosophy. You understand? Today, you call them philosophy degrees, PhDs. You understand? Now, these things began way back. Now, an example in Acts 17, verse 18, uh, Acts 17, 18 is an example. Philosophy. There are then certain philosophers of the Epicureans. Now, Epicureans were a group, again, a, a sect of philosophers. Now, this, this is in the Bible. And of the Stoics, because we also we have Epicureans and we have Stoics. Now, these are a little bit deeper uh, faculties that were happening among, in the Greek, among Greeks. And so, <clears throat> the Bible says they encountered him. And some said, what would this babbler say? Other some, uh, uh, other some, he seems to be a set of forth. They called him a set of forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. <laughs> you see that? And so, and they took him and brought him unto Aeropagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine 
whereof thou speakest. Because you see, these guys love hearing new things, but they love hearing new things after the pattern of philosophy. You know, so that's why they had to take him to that special place to speak to them. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know therefore what these things mean. Why? Because these guys love hearing new things. And you, you see, uh, Grishan's Bible says Gentiles love, love knowledge. When you hear Paul writing, it says they love knowledge. He's talking about philosophy. New principles, new things that excite, new things that make someone feel proud of a certain part, area of life, maybe in an area of health, maybe in an area of politics, whatever it may be. And that's why in conclusion, verse 21, he tells us that for all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else, but either to tell or to hear some, some new thing. <laughs> Woo! Grishans loved knowledge. They loved new things. Of course we have that generation. They, you also think they loved revelation or philosophy. Philosophical revelations. <laughs> That's why uh, Jesus says that Jews seek a sight and then Gentiles seek knowledge. You understand? He's talking about philosophy because philosophy is a big bait that Satan has used to, to hold men captive in the human systems, in systems of limitation. You understand? And so, you see... <laughs> This scripture is, is explaining to us, just like you see, vain deceit, uh, vain deceit are theories based on fallen elements or principles of the world. You understand? But the principles of the fallen world, everyone must fall sick, for example. Everyone must fail at some point. Everyone must die someday. You understand? And these things are not after Christ. These are, these are vain deceits. The Bible says philosophies. And some of you have no idea that some of the things you've believed for so long are based on philosophy. You understand? So we have philosophical preachers in the body of Christ today. Many encouragers today are philosophers. Many, I mean, we have many philosophical. And that's why Paul told the, Cor the Corinthian church that I did not come to you uh, in the wisdom of men. I didn't. Because I know you guys love philosophy. And I can afford to preach to you philosophy. But, but, I, but, but I can't. <laughs> you understand? So it's important to be aware of philosophy and vain deceit. You understand? Because the person behind philosophy and vain deceit is actually sitting in his cohorts. Satan influences humanity through, like, for example, you see what you see in media, in television, you look at Hollywood and whatever happens there. You understand? And so you look at the movies, you look at newspapers, radio, internet, social media. All these things, they carry two themes. They carry philosophy and vain deceit. Philosophy and vain deceit. So you've got to have the wisdom of God to filter what is philosophy. And of course, Christianity can also be a philosophy, if you have to use the English word philosophy. Because it's a predominant pattern of ideas that create a belief system and that shapes one's behavior. You understand? So what we call, you may call it Christian philosophy. I avoid using the word philosophy because it's largely used in a certain faculty. When it comes to Christianity, I may not call it necessarily Christian philosophy. There are people who call it that way. You understand? So it's important for you to know that when you're dealing with warfare, you're dealing with, with philosophy, you're dealing with vain deceit, you're dealing with traditions of men. You understand? I'm just showing you all these lines. Of deception that we must confront and deal with when we're talking about Christian warfare. You remember Mark chapter 7, verse 13, a very, very common verse. Mark 7 13. It says, Making the word of God none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such things do you. Jesus was talking to uh, you know the Pharisees here and the Jews, because there are many believers who live by beliefs and traditions derived from their unbelieving parents and guardians. Many Christians follow tradition in many things as opposed to seeking God's opinion through the revelation of his word. I mean, the Christians you meet, they want to run their marriages the way their great-grandmother, who was not a believer, runs it. Do you understand? They want to run business another way, not, not God's way. And there are many Christians who live that way, and they're comfortable. And they think they only bring in God when they're looking for protection, when they're looking for unmerited favor. God bless me with favor. But meanwhile, the way you're running your business, it is not based on the word of God. The way you're running your marriage is not based on the revelation of truth. The way you're, 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 you're running your career or whatever you're doing, it's not based on the revelation of truth. It's based on tradition. It's based on philosophy. It's based on vain deceit. So how is it going to prevail? How is it going to prosper? How is it going to prosper? But I want to go to the end part of this, of this teaching because I have a lot of things to say anyway in this area. One month is not really enough because we have five services. But I would say that when Satan wants to work against humanity, Satan uses um, his system. Satan already has a fallen system, which he created. Ephesians chapter 6, Paul gives us a picture of actually Satan's fallen system. And I want to say something important. 
because some of you need to be careful uh, at some of these things that happen around us. And I want to show you how Satan exactly does it. Some of you asked a question, but how? What is the difference between these principalities and demons? What is the difference between angels and this? I want to answer some of these questions now. Now you see, when Satan fell, when Lucifer fell and became Satan or the devil, or he, he didn't fall alone. The Bible says he drew a third part of the stars of God. In other words, he drew a third part of the angels at the time. And all angels, according to the Bible, they don't exceed. They don't exceed the level of a principality. Satan himself is a principality because he's a cherub. You understand? He's a cherub. He's a cherub that has functionalities of, of, of a seraph and, and you know many other functionalities that you know, Lucifer has. So when he fell, he didn't fall alone. He fell with other with other angels. Now these angels, when they fell at whichever rank they fell, they occupied the same rank when they began serving with Satan. Now, Satan lied to them that for him, actually, is the ultimate system. For him, is like God. You understand? And so, Satan is a principality, but he, he, you know, he makes himself to be above a principality. You understand? And he has convinced all these guys that serve with him. It's just how smart he is. That's why I told you, a person who can even lie to fellow angels is very, very dangerous. You understand? <laughs> because angels are already already complete. Angels are, you know, were created perfect. But if Lucifer had the liberty and ability to lie to angels, to submit to him, to disobey with him, to serve with him, promising them glory at a latter stage, yet there is perdition. You understand? That is how smart he is. Now the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, and put on the whole armor of God. And in the end, he says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, number one, principalities, number two, powers, number three, against rulers of darkness, number four, it says rulers of darkness of this world. There's a phrase, this world. If I, I don't have time to explain in detail this scripture, but I'm going to give you at least guidelines. You really know. Number four, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, what are these things exactly? Because the guy who is writing knew what he was writing. <laughs> you understand? Paul's mind is so rich here. He's writing about beautiful things. Now, he's saying that among fallen angels, there were those that belong to the group of principalities. The word principality means a prince governing a place. This place could be a region or a kingdom. And that's why you see in Daniel chapter 10, we have the prince of Persia. That is a fallen angel. It is a principality. It is a demonic spirit. You may call it a demonic spirit, but it's a fallen angel which rules a particular kingdom. You understand? That's why the only person or the only angel that could confront the prince of Persia was Gabriel, who was also an archangel. Because Gabriel, or rather, not Gabriel, was Michael, who is like God, Michael. Now, Michael was taken over the entire nation of Israel. For him, was a principality as well. So as a principality, he had to confront a fellow principality. You understand? That's when now Gabriel, the communication officer, had to bring the information to, da to, 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 to Daniel. You understand that? And so the first rank in the order of Satan, Satan puts himself above all this, but then he follows up by principalities because <clears throat> principalities are the ones who decide how the kingdom or the region is going to function. What are some of the things they need? Now, after they give these things to what we call powers. Now, powers are authorities. Now, these authorities are governors within, within a particular kingdom. You understand? Look at, for example, East Africa is a region. East Africa has a principality that is in charge of the region. You understand? But within the principality, uh, that actually, that, that principality <laughs> is, a, is actually a queen. You understand? I don't have time to explain about that. That particular principality that rules East Africa is not actually a king. Because calls themselves a queen, you understand? Now, she's a principality that has authorities that give commands to rulers of darkness. Now, they give them which kind of things they want to be done, and then the, what you see in powers, when, when you look at that scripture, when it, when it says that, uh, it says, is that but against principalities, and powers, you understand? Now, powers is meaning authorities. Now, these are authorities that give commands. Now, these are commanders. Like, you know, generals in a place that commanders, they command. Whom do they command? They command rulers of darkness. 
You understand? Because now rulers of darkness of this world are the supervisors of the actual executions of evil. Now these are supervisors. Now I'm just showing you the hierarchy of how these guys are. Now number four, we have spiritual wickedness in high places. Now spiritual wickedness in high places is what we call the actual enforcement of evil in men's minds. Please listen. This is the actual enforcement of evil in men's minds. Now when you hear spiritual wickedness in high places, now these are so many, they have many groups. You understand? They, they, they have so many groups. They are, they are evil, what you call evil spirits, what you call demons. Now there are also classes which are among humans like mame, mamans and mamids. You understand? Who represent spirits of men that are serving the devil. Now among spiritual wickedness in high places, there are many, there are many classes which have also their own leadership. Some of you wanted me to give you this information, now I'm giving you. And so, for them, uh, a principality does not fight anyone, does not actually do it, just, just gives the, the blueprint of how a society should be run. And then, powers, these are authorities, they give commandments. When they give commandments, spiritual wickedness have no place, uh, rather rulers of darkness have no place, because these are rulers. And once spiritual wickedness guys don't function, it is rulers of darkness that are going to punish them. Why haven't you done this? You understand? Why is that church still prospering? Why is this and this still happening? Please go. Keep on trying. You never know you win. And these things are true. <laughs> you know, but what do they exactly do? When you have evil spirits, demons, mermaids, mammoths, what do they actually do? You understand? Their agenda, their clear agenda is deception. They say, how do we deceive minds of men? How do we deceive? They don't come and fight and lift buildings and throw down buildings. When you see buildings burning, these things and the other, that is a real a collaboration of, of, of evil forces with humans. Satan cannot do anything on this earth without a collaboration of a human being. That's why demons love entering humans. It is the safest place because they were told you have to deceive. So they have to enter human mind and continue with their place of deception. There are many genuine believers who have plenty of demons in their minds and those demons are like strongholds they are cut there what can deliver them is the word of god i'm sorry to say but there are many christians who are demonized demonized in their mind and this is true sometimes i talk to christians ah, and some of them have so many demons so many demons and it's only by the word that these devils can be cast out forever because the word frees it breaks the stronghold when the stronghold is broken, all these demons fly. They flee. Do you understand? And so I was telling you, all these four, they are fifth order, these guys who execute. So spirits and demons, mermaids and mamans, they just execute. They're executors. You understand? Of the orchestrated plan that has come from a principality. And a principality has also picked it from the devil. You understand? So if the devil needs a report, he has nothing to do with the rulers of darkness or powers. He has principalities. Like, guys, what's up? What's up, guys? If a, a, a power, an authority wants, wants a report, gets it from rulers of darkness, has nothing to do with spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, this spiritual wickedness in high places, the, 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 the supervisor, the, the, rather these enforcers of, of, of you know, all these commandments, it's, it's, it's amazing, it's amazing. So, you can't find Satan having discussions with authorities. For what? His, his talks are with principalities. Of course, the other people Satan attracts are human beings. Now, you see, these mermaids and mermaids are human beings. Who are willing to offer themselves to the devil. So these ones can meet the devil. That's why you see, it is true that humans can meet, can meet Satan. That's true. That's not a lie. It's true. Why? The devil would rather give opportunity to a human being than to meeting a, a, an authority, a rule of darkness, or a spiritual wickedness. He will meet a human being because it's faster. When you meet a human being, you convince them quickly. What do they want? They want money. What do they want exactly? They want ABCD. He fixes their needs so fast. That they begin serving so quickly. That they have results so quickly. If he wants them to kill men, they will do that. If he wants them to sacrifice this, they will do that. If he wants them to do they will do so fast because he gives them condition. That's true. So if someone has a priority, they want to meet the devil. It is very easy for a human being to do that. I'm sorry to say that. I know some of you find this strange. But when you hear young boys say they've met the devil, they're not lying. They have. You answer and they can meet the devil and they remain the same. And it's true. It's true because what the devil will do will ensure that these guys have a system of, 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 of captivity. Will ensure that this human being can be dealt with 
uh, with a spiritual wickedness, can, can function rulers of darkness, can, can be infiltrated by authorities, and can also deal with principalities. That's why there are men who serve also under the order of principalities, under the order of powers. Now, men and brethren, you told me to share with you these things and allow me to do that. <laughs> now, when you see these rankings, just like I told you with angels, just like I told you with a, with a divine order of things, eh? where we have, you know, glorious thrones, we have principalities. I told you men can be principalities and angels are principalities. The same thing happens to the devil. The devil can assign a human being to also be at a rank of a principality. Operating there with this principality. Either it's work, this human being is working as an angel for these principalities or is part of the system. Why does the devil do that? He has seen God do that. He has no blueprint of himself. He has to copy and he has to convince human beings. I've met men today who serve the devil, but they're different rankings. There is a guy who died some time back. He's one of the guys who I've ever seen functioning at the highest level because for him he was a principality. And the way human beings that are principalities function in the second realm is so, so classic. You understand? For, for this fallen world, it's so classic. It looks nice. You understand? Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> and so I was telling you that when you look at this divine order of things, human beings are part of the system of the devil because the devil knows that he cannot take over this physical world without human beings. He knows that. He knows that. You can't, he can't kill a man without a human being participating. He can't cause an accident by himself. He needs a human being to do that. Because a human being is one who has authority over, the, over this physical world. So the devil has to collaborate with a human being to bring forth an accident, to bring forth these things and the other. And so Satan has so many people working for him, has so many human beings working for him. That's what makes, him, makes it so easy for him. If there are no human beings who collaborate with the devil, let me tell you, he would have nothing to do on earth. But you see, he has all these orders which I've given you, but all these things, their strength is in the Nephilim that is dealing with spirits and demons who are the executors. I mean, one time maybe I'll share with you the depth of these things, but not today. Today I'm giving you guidelines. You understand? Secrets of warfare. Now, how do these four ranking, all the five levels of satanic executions happen in the physical world? Allow me to give you the gateways. I want to explain the gateways. Through which these five levels of satanic executions exactly happen in the physical realm. I don't teach these things. But I've been provoked today. So allow me to say a few things today. In the next teachings, you won't hear me talk about Satan a lot. <laughs> I have some permission to talk about him today because I want to just show you how Satan does it exactly. You understand? How does he do it? Now you see, the first entrance, the first gateway Satan uses is anger. I've said this again and again. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. Neither give a place to the devil. You understand, verse 27 tells us, neither give a place to the devil. Every time you are angry, you have anger with you, and you don't deal with it immediately. You attract demons. I've said this again and again, again and again. Demons are attracted to angry people. That's what the Bible says, that an angry man is like a man without uh, control over his spirit, or, you know, his anger, is like a city without walls. It attracts any garbage, anything. So every time, now look at yourself. Wait for the time when you're angry. If you've not learned to deal with anger inside one mint or before one mint, you're in trouble. You understand? You're in trouble. If you can keep anger for more than one mint, you're in trouble. Listen to me carefully. If you, can, if you have the liberty to be annoyed with someone or a situation or God, whatever it may be, you're angry for more than 60 seconds. You're in big trouble because you attract demons. That's why every time you're angry, Evil suggestions have to come to you about somebody. That's when you collect information about this person. This person did this. this person, it's demons that are opening your eyes. Anger gives demons access to preach to you. Anger gives demons access to interact with your mind. An angry person is a demonic person. An angry person attracts demons. Demons. Any level of demons. To convince your mind. Why don't you do this to them? Why would they do this to you? Why? Don't they think you're a human being? Don't they think you're... What does she call herself? What does it... Every time those are demons. Don't tell me you've not listened to demons. You have. Actually, many of you listen to demons. Many of you interact with demons and you have no idea. 
you're spirit filled, you're born again, you speak in tongues, that does not stop demons from coming to you as long as you have the liberty to be angry. I don't care whatever somebody has done to you. As long as you have the liberty to be annoyed, anger. Anger is a gateway for demons to fellowship with a Christian. Anger is a gateway to invite demons on a table of discussion. If you can deal with anger before the 60 seconds elapse, you're blessed. Why? You've closed down one of the key gateways that Satan has over people. <laughs> now the Bible says I hate his brother is a murderer. Because you see, a hatred in the spirit realm equals to murder. I've explained that before. You can look for some of archive teachings. How, how hatred equals to murder in the spirit realm. You understand? And so that's number one gateway. Number two, a wandering mind. A wandering mind. Now, a wandering mind is also a gateway for demons. You understand? Now, sometimes a wandering mind comes when spiritual instructions come to your mind. And then you begin reasoning spiritual things physically. You understand? A wandering mind can come as a result of reasoning spiritual things in a physical way. In the end, also unbelief can bring in a wandering mind. You understand? Your mind never settles. It's wandering left, right, center. Now, that also attracts demons because demons can tell that someone's mind is distracted. I mean, it's amazing how spiritual beings can all, can all easily know. You understand? So, a wandering mind can attract demons. And that's true. Number three, direct mental bombardment of evil spirits. There's what we call the direct mental bombardment of evil spirits. Now, this happens due to natural circumstances. When you're going through disaster, maybe uh, you were not paid or you work for something and somebody maybe <clears throat> didn't pay you or when your child is sick and you've tried everything, nothing is working. Situations attract demons to bombard the mind, to tell, to speak to you that you, you look here. Don't think God is going to come through for you. Let me tell you, prepare for your death. Those are demons that are talking to people. And let me tell you, this is very common. Direct mental bombardments are one of the commonest things because they have nothing to do with anger. They have nothing to do with a wandering mind. So however smart you may be, you will face a circumstance which is challenging. Now in that circumstance, you either allow the communication of demons or you allow the communication of God's word. So direct mental bombardments are due to natural circumstances. Natural circumstances like, you know, calamities, you look at the pandemics, you look at the disaster striking places, I mean, sickness and disease attacking people. All these things attract direct mental bombardment of Satan. That's why the Bible tells us the weapons of warfare are not kind of, but a mighty through God that are pulling down the strongholds. It doesn't end there. He says, casting down imaginations. And he says, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You understand? And so direct bombardments of Satan are the commonest. That's why some of you, I mean, you face this every day. You're bombarded. You're on the right track serving God. And then funny thoughts come. But you think you'll be appreciated. You think anyone will read even what you write? You think everyone, anyone will really listen to you? Even if you go and share, people will laugh at you. These are demons talking. And by, it's amazing how a believer can't even know who is talking to them. This is not yourself. These are demons that are bombarding you with negative thoughts. You want to do business, you know, negative thoughts come to you. They bombard you. Oh, people have failed. You know, you want to marry somebody. I mean, demons will come and say, ah, oh, marriages are bad. You think people who are married are any happy? <laughs> It's only no idea. You understand? Now, direct bombardments of the mind sometimes cause people to have a wandering mind. That's why you must learn to harness your mind. It's true that demons attack your mind with thoughts. True. You understand? It is true. But it's like uh, somebody put it that. Okay. Right, so um, number number four. Number four. Let's let's run quick. We need to bring this for closure. I have many that eight to share with you. Number four. Number four. Attacks through dreams. Attacks through dreams. Now, there's so many scriptures about this. I wish I had time to explain. But you see, attacks can happen through dreams. You've heard of people having dreams, maybe while having sex, falling in pits. Now, there are spirits that are orchestrated to do some of these jobs, and it's true. For example, mermaids and mamans work a lot as... The, 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 those, there's a class of mermaids and mermaids that deals with 
with sexual perversion. So they are commonly called as succubus if they are female, and then incubus or you know incubus succubus. Succubus they are female, incubus male. Now these appear in dreams. You've heard of spiritual husbands, spiritual wives. You've heard of sex in dreams. You understand that sometimes happens, and you know. Uh, the Bible talks about dreams everywhere in the scriptures, you know, especially in the book of Job. There are so many scriptures which are given uh, in, in, in the Bible. Now, somebody said, Does this, do these things happen in, to a believer? Yes, they can happen. But how do you deal with them? That's the most important thing. Job 7.14 tells us, Job 7.14 tells us, Then thou scarest me with dreams and terrifies me through visions. I mean, there are dreams that are scary that come to people. And that's true. Do you understand? And so attack, Satan can attack through a dream. Can give you a bad dream. What is he looking for? He's sowing seeds in your mind. He wants you to believe something such that it starts from there. He wants you to believe that you have a problem sexually. He wants you to believe that your future has a problem. That's why you must learn to subdue dreams. Negative things that happen in dreams. Because Satan uses dreams to sow seeds of discord. Seeds of deception. When I just started working with God, I remember about 20 years ago, uh, I had a trance and this trance, Satan was trying to say something. And I could discern that in this trance, it's not God who's appearing, it's the devil. Because he was trying to show me that brother so-and-so has a problem and it's against you. Uh, I said, Satan, I know your tricks, you're attacking me. It was a trance actually. <laughs> I was in class and, you know, I just, I just was reading and then I, I, I began dozing a little bit as between awake and asleep. And I, I get a trance about a brother who was a minister. In the fellowship and and satan was trying to sow seeds i refuted them i said satan away from me you can you can you can i'm not gonna hate this brother no in the name of jesus i walk in love i refuse if there be any seed of discord i cancel it out in jesus mighty name that's number four number five gateways early childhood development early childhood development patterns of deception early childhood development patterns of deception. I've already given you examples of this. Being conformed to this world. I mean, there are things when you're growing up as a child. Maybe you were so much punished when you're a child, when you're a child so you grow up with this defensive mechanism in mind that thinks everyone wants to hurt you. And so this becomes a stronghold. And this was, this was sold by the devil. But you didn't know. It was through circumstance. So early childhood development patterns of deception are very, very common in our society. Uh, number six, Satan uses social media, television, movies and soaps, radio and the internet at large. These are used to sow intentional seeds of deception in order to convince the mind about something. Thus establishing a stronghold in one's mind. In other words, Satan uses social media to normalize certain things. I mean, you hear people talk about homosexuality and this and the other. What is the devil looking for? The devil is looking at making something normal. And once it becomes normal in the human mind, that human mind can be dealt with. You understand? And so social media, television, radio. Now I'm not saying these things are evil necessarily. But Satan uses them as gateways. Because there are many people behind movie production in Hollywood who directly serve Satan. Who stand for the values of the devil. There are so many people who own televisions and they belong to the devil. And they're not ashamed of it. They're glad serving the devil. And so these people, the content they bring to children, the content they bring forth, it is to destroy humanity. You understand? And so Satan uses these as gateways. And that's what the Bible tells us. But refuse profane. You remember 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7. But refuse profane and all wise favors. And train up yourself rather toward godness. You have to refuse certain things. And so you must be aware of how to use social media, television, all these things. Number seven, because I'm concluding. Evil books and information about occultism and their practices. Now, there are evil books that spread, uh, that act as gateways, that people, books have been published on evil. So there are people who read them and their heart is open to evil. You understand? Today, even on the internet, there's people who teach others how to astral project. There are people who introduce others in the spirit realm. You understand? And that's true. There are occultic books. You remember in the book of Acts 19. Maybe we should read this scripture because some of you don't know that Satan actually has used this for ages. Actually, the Bible tells us in Leviticus, Le Leviticus, it should be Leviticus, if I'm not mistaken, Leviticus 19 verse 31. Uh, God was warning the children of Israel who go to consult mediums, necromancers, wizards. You understand? But these necromancers and wizards have books. And that's why in Acts chapter 19, when you read from verse, let me see, 
should be verse 18. Yes, from verse 18. Acts 19 from verse 18. The Bible tells us, uh, Paul was preaching, of course, uh, in Ephesus. And, and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Verse 19. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together. Books together. Books together. Books together. And burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found 50,000 pieces of silver. So in other words, Satan can even publish books as early as that time. There were books on evil, on how men could, could practice curious arts, how men could practice witchcraft, how a man could become a wizard, how a man could become a necromancer. You see that? And today they are also available. You may not be aware, but this is how Satan has used these as gateways to enter humanity. Finally, lastly but not least, Satan can use what we call transmeditation. Transmeditation. Just write it down. Transmeditation. Transmeditation can be through drugs. Transmeditation can be through uh, what we call guided imagery. Introduction to mental telepathy. Introduction to the third eye. Now, all these things lead to what they call a blank mind in order for demons to take over someone's mind. I remember many years ago, about 19 years ago, I dealt with a case where <clears throat> I was preaching in a certain, uh, in a church. And uh, I found a young man who told me that they were seeing demons. When we would cast out demons, they would see demons flying all over. And asked the Lord, how did this guy get to this? He's born again. Are you born again? Yes. And the Lord told me actually that this guy, his spirit and soul, there, there was a disconnection which had been removed. You remember... Uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, the Bible says the word of God is sharp and twin each sword, piercing the divining sound of soul and spirit. So the word that divides the soul and spirit, uh, I mean spiritual, this had been removed. So this man was conscious of his spirit, who would see the spirit realm. And asked the Lord, what should I do? He told me, put back that edge between his spirit and soul, such that he can no more see direct in the spirit realm the way he's doing. He was introduced in the spirit realm because he was dragged. Someone gave him a cake which had drugs. And he, he, he blacked out for three days. And during that blackout time, he was introduced in the spirit realm. You understand? So we have what we call guided imagery. Uh, those we call uh, mental telepathy. There's so many practices that, you know, Satan has used to introduce men to evil. You understand? And so it's important. Today, I just want to give you highlights to know how Satan actually operates. The true place of our warfare. I've shared with you the stages of evil executions from the place of principalities, powers who are rulers and rulers of darkness, uh, you know, powers who are authorities and then rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. I've shared with you the gateways they use as well. So you need to have a wisdom on how to deal with the warfare. Because all these things you're seeing, they look at one thing, they look at deception. Anger attracts demons to lie to you about somebody. Even if they're telling you facts, so what? Are those the things that build a Christian? It is the love of God that builds a Christian. But Satan will bring negativity to you, will tell you how so and so is bad, how this and the other. What is he looking for? He's looking for broken relationships. He's looking for controversy. He's looking for malice. He's looking for pride. He's looking for every evil thing. Why? It's because he wants people to live in confusion. He doesn't want people to experience the life of God. So all those things you see, a wandering mind, direct bombardments of the mind, attacks through dreams, early childhood development, patterns of deception, social media, television, radio, internet, all these things are looking for deception, to build, to deceive your mind, to lie to your mind, to corner your mind in a certain place. Do you understand? And so as a Christian, just know there are certain things which will continue coming to you. Do you understand? If you subdued anger, a wandering mind will attack you. If you subdued a wandering mind, mental bombardments will come to you. If you subdue me mental bombardments, I mean, attacks will come to you in your dream. If they don't come in the dream, I mean, social media is there. And man, number six is crazy. Social media, television, those things are here to stay. So you must give up a certain discipline. Why are you cut out Satan? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I know I've moved longer in this teaching, but I want to give you a sure foundation for our warfare. Such that when we shall show the following signs, it will be it will be a little lighter. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are blessed. And I pray for you that God establishes you mightily. <clears throat> I pray for you that God builds you up mightily, that you learn to fight. You, you never be a victim of circumstance. You, you understand how the devil attacks and that the devil pulls people down. You, you get to a place where you rise above the evil influence of Satan. When negative bombardments come in your mind, you know what to do. You know how to respond. If Satan brings a negative song in your mind, brings negative pictures in your mind, you know what to do. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Don't forget you have an opportunity to give so you can share. Send in your offering. Send in your offering. And if you're out there, yes, you need to offer. I pray for your offering in the name of Jesus. You are blessed. And for those of you who want to receive Jesus in your heart, just repeat this prayer. If you want to get born again, just say, Dear Father, thank you for today. I receive Jesus in my heart as my Savior and Lord. I confess that I'm born again. Amen and amen. If you made that prayer, be sure you're born again. Contact us. We want to help you grow. We want to help you grow. So don't forget to share this message with somebody and make sure that you are available for the rest of the month for all these services. Let you learn a lot about spiritual warfare. Please read the devotionals. A lot will be revealed in there and your life will be changed forever. Looking forward to seeing you again. You are blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved. I bless you in everything you do in the mighty name of Jesus. The blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which blessing was revealed in Christ, is upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus, your work is blessed. Your hands are blessed. Your children are blessed. Your family is blessed. Your career is blessed. Your work is blessed. Everything about you is blessed in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. See you again, child of God. We love you. Ministries Global introduces Apostle Tony A. Kalema to unleash the patent and unsearchable riches in God's Word to give you practical application in your walk of faith. For more information, you can contact us on 0778-630265 or 0200-900-824 or you can reach us on all social media platforms under Haggis Doxa. Download our app from Google Play Store or App Store or you can reach us on our website www.haggisministriesglobal.org Remember, the word of God is not just a mere message but a life to be lived. Enjoy.